Welcome back. We're going to continue our study in the book of Revelation and we're looking at verse 6 and 7 and we read. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal or everlasting gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. So again, we notice that the word then ushers in or indicates a fresh vision from John. And the vision again indirectly contrasts the dwellers in heaven with the dwellers or inhabitants of the earth. The scene from heaven and then realizing the everlasting gospel which is released to the dwellers or inhabitants of the earth. So probably the first question we must ask is why middle heaven? It could mean taking center stage or being directly overhead or else the highest point or the most prominent place from which a divine proclamation is made and that is in the heavens and perhaps reminding us that the sun capital s is brightest at noon so to speak in figurative terms the sun in all his glory declaring the need for the eternal good news or if we translate it directly the well message being proclaimed to the inhabitants of the earth and all would indicate the angel has an important announcement to make like someone stepping up to a podium and delivering the pinnacle of all messages and here we see the angel capital a not an angel involved in the preaching of the gospel proclaiming the good news of salvation and reconciliation with God, the sent one who represents the personification of salvation. And the only person who can do that is Yeshua, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And therefore, it points to him being Christ Jesus, our Lord. We will later like see that is exactly why John fell down and started worshipping the angel because it was Jesus, but in a different perspective. The one who encamps us and in desiring to introduce the kingdom to all mankind. So without any doubt, this points to Jesus being the messenger with a capital M, preaching or bringing even, ushering in the reconciliation between man and God as that pre-existent plan of Father God, as we read about in Ephesians 1. And we see the invitation readily available to all, to every race and tribe and language and people here. This following on from having spoken about the 144,000. So again, we see the contrast that God wants to draw us into being his people and to be as such 100%. Now we do believe in angelic encounters, just like the one Cornelius had. And remember, they did not preach the gospel to Cornelius, but pointed him to Peter, who would later come and preach the gospel to them. And as a family, they accepted Jesus. And we anticipate that it will become more commonplace for angels to participate in our commissioning in spreading the gospel as we are, as Peter said, in the last days. So the angel's initial response is important. In other words, with a loud voice, he literally said, be afraid of God and give him glory. It's imperative. The word here that's used in the Greek is not reverential or proskuneo, which we'll look at later. It is phobos, 
It means be afraid, fearful. Because this is addressed to the world, not to the citizens of heaven. Saying to the world, ensure you are in submission to his eternal will. Believe in him whom the Father has sent. The exhortation, as we have mentioned and repeatedly mentioned, is addressed to the dwellers or inhabitants of the earth. So when he talks about the hour of his judgment, it's not like it is 60 minutes or 360 seconds. It indicates in a figurative way, implying urgency uh, or a short time. So this is a really important pivotal point, in other words, pointing to the judgment that comes on the day of Jesus' return to earth. And this application we've seen before and again confirm our views concerning how timelines or time periods work within the book of Revelation. An important word, word that's used here is crisis, which means judgment. And according to Vine, it primarily denotes a separating process, but it also refers to a decision or judgment to favor or disfavor an act or person and is used especially in terms of divine judgment in the New Testament. Jesus said, the harvest is at the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. They will weed out those who have rejected him and the righteous will remain in his kingdom. Perhaps it would be good to bear Psalm 78 verse 49 to 50 in mind here as Egypt or Mizraim in Old Testament terms is a type of the world, the place of double bondage. And God's judgments that came upon Egypt is mentioned here. And therefore it will ultimately come upon those who have made this world their habitation or secure dwelling place. Let's read. He loosed on them his fierce anger, all his fury, rage and hostility. He dispatched against them a band of destroying angels. He turned his anger against them. He did not spare the Egyptians' lives, but ravaged them with the plague. Sobering scripture. So let us also consider Matthew 13 verse 25 to 30 in this regard. Jesus taught. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring them into my barn. This concurs with the separation process when divine judgment is carried out at and on Jesus' return. When the sheep and the goats are separated and the good fish from the bad fish in Jesus' parables. And Jesus explained this parable to his disciples and it was very sobering. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. And here we see again the gospel released by the angel referring to him being Jesus as the son of man is the one who sowed the good seed. The field is the world and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age and the harvesters are are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. 
the Son of Man will send out His angels and they will weed out of His kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them in the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. It requires the whole world to recognize God's role in their existence, and in particular, Jesus' role as the creator of the universe and the creator of all things seen and unseen. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. The spiritual declaration, as we can see, is a continuous one. The call to faith before the hour of God's judgment is ongoing even now until he returns. And we have the joy to join in here. Whenever we share the gospel, we collaborate with heaven. We give God's good news substance as we preach it and declare it and proclaim it as ambassadors of the kingdom of God and being his kingdom of priests, spreading the good news all over the world. Perhaps this would be a good point to recognize the important importance of escaping the corruptible things and the so-called life of this earth, as Jude wrote. But you, dear friends, must build each other up in your most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will bring you eternal life. In this way, you will keep yourself safe in God's love. And you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to still others, but do so with great caution, hating sin that contaminate their lives. So let us do our utmost best to bring this beautiful reconciliation, the message of well-being, to everyone that we come in contact with and do so with joy. So until next time, blessings.